Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Hunkered Down with Seth. I'm Seth, and we're hunkered down. Today, my guest is one of my favorite people. I've known her since she started improv. She has done so much. I think she's a talent that is, could... I mean, we're talking about serious talent here. We're talking somebody who could just uh, explode on the scene, be be legitimately a solid actress, a solid improviser, you name it, she could do it. Tondi Davis. Tondi, welcome to Hunker Down with Seth. Thank you for being here. How are you? Thank you, Seth. What an intro. Thank you for pronouncing my name correctly. Oh, of we course. didn't even practice. Of course, I've known you for, uh, well, when was, when did you start Perfect. doing improv? Mm, well, it's all started, um... It was 2016, well, right? Yeah, I'm going to go with your date. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. And uh, what what was the... the Market Theater. Yeah, what was the initial spark that uh, caused you to uh, go here? You know, what was your motivation? Um, you know, uh, long story short, middle child syndrome, oh. uh, basically. But, you know, I really wanted to get back on stage, and I was like, well, I don't, I don't know how to do things. I went to the theater as just a regular patron, you know, getting distracted from a terrible breakup, uh -oh. and then and then I just did it, went on the stage and was awesome at it. I yeah. met a few other, actually a lot of other improvisers as well. Oh, <laughs> it's a nice. very similar story. Pretty much, it's, yeah. My uh, good thing with me, my uh, improv start wasn't breakup involved, but you know, teach <laughs> teach their own. You know, there's a million yeah, different stories. Tragedy. Yeah, mine wasn't. Motivation. Mine wasn't a tragedy. I wanted a coffee. I noticed that the theater sold coffee, so I <laughs> bought a ticket. Boom. Oh, that's nice. Mine was like that, but with alcohol. Oh, nice. And then yeah, I get it. That's a circle, right? That was, but yeah, but um, it's great stuff. What a welcoming group of people. And I was new to town, so it was a very nice place to make friends. Very quickly. Oh, oh, definitely. You know, we uh, as soon as we met, we were just instant buds. So I, I yeah. could, I could assure you, she is one of the easiest people to make friends with. So. BFFs. Do you remember? Okay, I'm gonna bring it up. Bring it. One of there was one time. I think it was a duo, and I don't believe it was with you, but you were there at the theater, and afterwards I was like, oh, what <laughs> sucked. I was like, oh, that was bad. I just didn't feel good after that scene for whatever reason. I just was like, ugh. And I was talking to you about it, and you were like, oh my god, the theater, it burned down? I was like, what? Well, hold on, no! He's like, oh my god, everyone left and booed? I was like, no, no. And he's like, oh, okay. So I was like, oh, so it just doesn't matter. Everything is fine. The world keeps going. And that's been a huge impression on me <laughs> and my my take on improv, actually. Wait, that moment. wait I said that? Yeah, you were like, oh, what happened? Like, the theater burned down? <laughs> and I was like, no, no. And you were like, oh, okay. Okay, then. <laughs> and I was like, oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah nothing <clears throat> happened. Nothing happened. What, I'll be, I'll, what a joy. I'll be perfectly honest. Um, a lot of the time at the theater... memories of me? Well, a lot of times at the theater, I was uh, less than sober. So... <laughs> I, that is something I would probably say, and, uh, you know, I'm very positive, you know, that it's improv, things happen once, then they ha never happen again, so I'm pretty sure that I said that, however, I, that specific memory is not there. No, well, it's okay, it's, it's fleeting, but it's, yeah. it's stuck with me, so, oh, I'm, that improv is fleeting. I'm glad, you know, I'm glad I made a impression on you, at least, because, uh, most, I mean, most of the time, no one really, you know, I would just tell dick jokes, and that's it, so. You know, that might, there might have been a dick joke in there, but it, it just didn't stick, you know, as well. Oh, good. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to ruin that uh, dick reputation of yours. No, it's probably you know, there. but, you know, there's two kinds of people. There's the dicks that nobody likes and the dick jokes that everybody likes. I tend to be in the... Second part, so. Yeah, it sounds very average. Yeah. But like good average. Oh, absolutely. 
Oh, I'm not. It's not. It's not the length of the dick joke. It's you know how it, how like big of an impact. Of it. Yeah. It, exactly. Are we all laughing, or is it just you? You know. Exactly. Check on, on these jokes. Oh, for sure. You know, as long as, as long as you're pleased for my dick joke, that's the important thing. As long as you read the room. <laughs> exactly. As long as the theater doesn't burn down. <laughs> yeah. Two minutes in. Good. I think we're, we're <laughs> great. Actually, five minutes thirty eight seconds in. So. Oh, okay. It's twenty five more minutes. To go. Okay, you got it. Wait, do you have a time limit? Do you have anywhere better to be? No, I have, you know, just a few little quarantine appointments. Oh, of course, you're a woman on the go, so I'm gonna... You know, I've actually been staying busy. I've, I have a routine. Ooh. Not that I stick to it, but I have one, and that's the first step. Oh. I get up, poop, it's on the top, top five things, get some coffee. Not in that order, you know, whatever order it comes in, I'm very... Very flexible with this. Yeah, I'm glad poop always is after wake up, though. That's always good. Oh, yeah. Get up, get out. Get it out. That's my <laughs> motto. Exactly. Doing, doing like one of these old cartoon, uh, yay! That thing's for it. That's, that's my routine after I poop. Huh? Oh, cute, cute. Yes. So... But what else is in your... Do you legit have, like, a, import, a routine you try to stick with? I do, actually, because I finally have been able to have a place to have a routine, yeah. Um, that is all real things that are on the list. <laughs> uh, what else? I say hello to my, the loves of my life. Oh. My life. One life. Oh. Nine. What else? And um, what else do I do? I eat. I try to do that. Some coffee or some tea. Wow. I dance or do meditation or yoga. A lot of twerking. I work on that. Working oh, on me that too. Lately. Yeah, you too. Yeah, yeah. A lot of squat challenges going on. You know, and mainly. Oh, and I do twenty push-ups. I'm not gonna brag, but I do. Yeah. What's your uh, main twerking song? Um. You know, I kind of just go to whatever. My Google <laughs> plays in the morning. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Mine's Country Grammar by Nelly. Oh, how's that one go? Um, down, down, baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There you go. That one? Yeah. That one. That's my twerk song. Out here. They've got so many great songs on the radio. And one that I'm <laughs> loving is... Uh, don't touch my truck. Ooh, woo, 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 woo. Something like that. that that's. <laughs> that, I gotta Google. I gotta Shazam that now. Don't touch my truck. Don't. If you type that into Google with that accent, it'll come up. Uh, it, it's. Uh, I, I, I just have my Wisconsin accent and nothing else. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I want to bring out what. Wisconsin? Yep, my Wisconsin accent, you know, me and Barb, we go down bowling and uh, we eat some, uh, we drink some beer and we watch the Packers. Ooh, that's mad. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to bring up something, whenever I talk improv, I always, especially duos, I always bring up our dodgeball scene. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, legitimately oh, yeah. one of my all-time favorite scenes that I've ever done regardless so so yeah i think that was just like a regular scene yep. until you you played dodgeball yeah it you know we <laughs> i remember this very vividly uh <clears throat> in the scene we played a couple that argued about taxes and then when jay <laughs> rang the bell we would play dodgeball we had balls so when when i first brought this to you what was your thoughts <laughs> Um, you know, I don't remember, but I'll think about it now. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I was like, yes, let's do it. And I probably thought I had better aim than what I have in, in reality. Yeah. I like to think big. And we weren't holding back. We were really whipping the, the balls at each other. Yeah, I think I remember using a block as a shield or someone else coming to help me. Yeah. Because <laughs> there was 
was not mercy. No, and there was this one part where I was on one end of the stage, you were on the other, and Jay was taking the balls that fell in the audience and just yes, putting them yes. on your side. Give them to me, yes. And I, I do remember that. And I was, it was <laughs> one of the craziest, funnest things. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I love fun games like that where it's, <laughs> there's not a lot of singing and then there's a lot of moving around on stage. Exactly. It, that's, Shout out to Jay. You know, and the best part is it's... It's like the scene is secondary. Everybody, everybody pays attention because they're waiting for the moment the bell rings. So we were just doing our thing, and and we legit did a great scene together. But the dodgeball. Yeah, I'm surprised you even remember the the prompt of that text. Oh. What we were talking about. I, I just remember I have vague flashes of balls being thrown at my face. Yeah, a uh, little. <laughs> And I remember I went to the dollar store and got the soft uh, little plastic balls, made sure not to get the legit, like, rubber balls. You know, just, just as protection for us. Can we have all tightly have footballs? No, no. I, I think I, there was a couple footballs on there? No, there I think was... there were some Nerf balls. There was definitely not footballs. footballs. You know, I made I sure that... that. Tennis ball? I think there was a tennis ball, but... Uh, Whenever I saw it, I would pool just... Pool balls? Cue balls? Yeah, there was pool balls. I um, think uh, there was a wrecking ball. You know, there, you you had a crane and you were just... You came in. I felt like you came in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I want to talk about a couple things that you did performance-wise. Uh, first of all, uh, trio. This, your amazing improv trio. It's... It was Tandi, it was Isaiah, and it was Obadiah. And to be honest, you could have yeah. gotten rid of Obadiah, but... <laughs> <laughs> then it, wouldn't, it would not be trio. I know, I, I was joking. I love you, yeah, Obadiah. We gotta, get, we gotta get rid of this R character. Yeah. But, uh, love you, Obadiah. You're a great improviser. <laughs> so, just throw that out. Shout out to him. Yep. He's not relevant right now. Let's get back to me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it starts with a T in trio, you know, because tallest and my name also starts with a t yep and then and that's how you start the word trio you know there's a lot of reasons yep to get into it also it you could have gone ito or uh <laughs> oit otis. oit o-i-t <laughs> but no tri- <laughs> yeah but no how how did that come together i mean you isaiah and obadiah oh. and you guys are oh, great yeah. together yeah, um, honestly, yeah, shout out to both of them. I love them very much. They're uh, two of the most talented and, and just most favorite, just fun uh, players to play with. That out the way. Yeah, how it came together is actually me just kind of infiltrating it. We had, um, they separately had a gig with Dave Copper, another improviser, to have a one-man show. He wanted some openers. And I was also chosen to be an opener but for something else I was uh way back before my improv date I did that story on a podcast and it was a (laughs) a good old timeless classic tale of a girl Nicole starring me and they wanted me to just tell that story (laughs) before a couple other people do like happy fun improv and I was like well that seems a bit much how about I just join Join those two guys over there. And he was like, I'll ask them. And they were like, yeah, okay. Yeah. And, you know, that's a beautiful story. <laughs> How true. Yeah, we that was our first show together. And then we were just like, uh, I think we like this a lot. Let's just keep doing it. And yeah, you're like, and little did you know that that was actually one of the better marketed uh, improv teams. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, usually people come up with names and a group and, you know, it fizzles out, but you guys, you tended, you stuck more than other improv groups. We are great. Yeah, we're, we're great. Definitely. <laughs> and, okay, so you guys had a lot of fun. Then I, I want to ask you about, which I believe is your first official show that you did with the uh, Unexpected Productions, uh, <laughs> Little Bitches. Yes. <laughs> Little bitches. Little bitches. Far and away my favorite titled show. 
I mean, I, it is so fun. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that was amazing. Tiffany, Tiffany Hedge, shout out to her as well. She's like one of, she actually um, was my teacher for Improv 101 when I first started taking classes. She oh. is a teacher for that and also the director for Little Bitches. Nice. <laughs> and that was such a nice uh, segue into the theater <laughs> to get in there and do that, uh, which was like a show basically combining all of the teen dramas teen love stories teen whatever into one to one show and that was <laughs> that was great yeah, <laughs> it was our sunday night 8 30 show and it was hilarious a lot of like teen growing like you know those little embarrassing scenes coming of age yeah really cute it was a great <laughs> cast too a million times I don't know if I can say it. I said the F word. I don't know oh. if I can say that. I said that a lot, and then, then they told me afterwards. Sunday shows are usually more family-oriented, so. Yeah. So stop that. Oh, it's one of those improv lessons. You live and you learn. So. You know, you live and you learn. Yeah, and that was a great cast, too. Jessica Lancrum, Kathleen Jenkins, um, Obadiah. Uh, was Jacqueline part of it? Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. yeah, she was. Yeah, ja yeah. just... This amazing collection she of... She kind of... Yeah, really good. <laughs> really good nerdy girl and really good uh, mean girl, if you will. I know. She, she's... I mean, she's one of my favorite people, just one of the most down-to-earth people you'll meet. <laughs> but she has that mean girl look, you know? <laughs> you look at really, her... She makes cookies all the time. I, I yeah. can't give her the mean girl look, but she's good at it. Exactly. She she's got that look where in high school she would hate me. But but Jack, I, think, I I would might also hate you if I looked at you in high school. I'm just kind of spitballing. Yeah, I, if I, I looked at you in high school. I'd probably look at you like that. Little do you know that in sophomore year I was on homecoming court. So. I know. So I, you know, so I said that, but my high school is different. I didn't even really know what homecoming was until years after high school. What what <laughs> does that mean? Does that mean that you won like the king of homecoming, uh, like a sports dance? Is what I understand. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> so uh, every year for homecoming, their big dance and their football game or whatever, they have a. Uh, Basically, an election, and the homecoming king is usually the most popular person, but every class has somebody, like freshmen have their rep representation, sophomores have theirs, juniors have theirs, seniors have theirs. So I was my sophomore year homecoming court representative. Oh, wow. That is something. That's cool. That's really cool. Oh. Uh, <laughs> You know, I should. I did less than three last week, but it's only because I never had a sports team, so I don't understand. Like my high school mascot was a dream catcher, so I. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. It was what was it like? It one of those alternative high schools that is like yes. <laughs> study. <laughs> Absolutely was. They don't have grades. They only have enthusiasm. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I graduate with it enthusiastically. Nice. So, all right, so let's get back to the topic at hand, you know, your professional life. Uh, Black Ice, which, if I was in Seattle at the time, I would have attended every performance. So, we, Right, you missed out. I did. And what was your, uh, you know, how did this come about, and what did, what, how did you get involved? Okay, well, first off, the premise of Black Ice. Um, well, actually, okay, so I wasn't even there for the origin, origin story, so I won't tell that part. Um, thought maybe you <laughs> interview one of them. But that Black Ice had been created in a previous duo that I was not present for. Mm -hmm. I, I was gone from that, but I heard great, great things about it. In fact, I think I was out of town, maybe in Guam, and I, and I still heard really good things about it. So I was like, oh, cool. When I come back, you know, I was like, making my farewell exit uh, about to move to Texas, and they're like, well, before you go, I'm going to show you something you cannot say no to. And so, Jay, I feel like he tricked me. Yep. <laughs> he had me come to a rehearsal, and it was amazing. All I seen was just, like, the opening cute little <laughs> song or whatever. Yep. With, like, the little characters popping up and doing our little goofy 
moments and I was just like okay I can't I can't not do this show for one it's the most people of color in a cast on improv stage I've seen since I was in Seattle at all so yeah. that was something I was just incredibly proud to be a part of and also an amazing cast from all the people <laughs> of color and not it was, it was an amazing cast we all really supported each other yeah. and our storylines were just hilarious went all over the place and it was just such a fun show with some of my most favorite people to work with. Um, hopefully that show does come back, and I would cry out to, to do it, to see it, to be a part of it. Yep, and you performed with my favorite person of all time, Cliff Barnes. Yes, I didn't know you knew Cliff. I should have known, yeah. He, he, he's been in stand-up. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> yep, he's been in stand-up since the mid-'80s, and he's just one of those guys... Whenever he's around, I'm never more than five feet away from him. I love hanging out with him. He's just one of those guys that he'll make you laugh, he'll joke you around with you, and, you know, he doesn't care if you're, like, Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos, multi-billionaire, or just some little young open mic, or he'll treat everybody the same and joke around with them. I'm, I got nothing but great things to say about Cliffy. We had an amazing cast, including him. Yeah, on stage was the first time I had met him. <laughs> just on stage in the middle of a scene. <laughs> I was just like, oh, look who's here. Yeah. And he's just a hoot. And it, it, he took improv, like, just like a pro. He's never done it before, and I didn't know that until after speaking with him. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, he's, he, he's, he's the guy who... Before the show, during the show, and after the show, I'm at the bar hanging out with. I love Cliff so much. <laughs> you ever you ever hear any of his jokes? No. You, gotta, no. you can't steal them. No, no. I, you preface it with I, I'm, his jokes. I'm not, I've, I properly credit Cliff Barnes on his jokes. You know, I would never... Absolutely. Just, so he is like, I like tall women. I don't have a choice. Oh. <laughs> That's a good one, Annie. I hear that one from him. Yeah. <laughs> like he had, he had a opportunity to use that. Yeah, he's... Oh, that's good. I'm working. Yeah. I'm working my dreams. Not really working, but I'm, I'm working on a little bit of my own stand-up. Oh, really? A little, little jokes. Not really, but, you know, I have a few, few that I think are, they're just so funny. I laugh to myself in my head. Yeah, well... All the time. Well, I'm the perfect guy to run them by, you know, so... To try it on? Okay, yeah, I'll just... Yeah. Um, Try one on you. Okay, let's see. Like, one of the first ones I was thinking about, I've done a lot of jobs in my life, required a lot of outfits, and in general, this is kind of going back to the beginning of, of how I start my day. I like to poop, you know. I always got something going on in my, in my indigestion, so I'm really gassy as well. And I take that into account with what I wear. So to get sexy on you real quick, I, I was doing, like, some exotic dancing. Oh. And um, I noticed you, you wear, like, these G-strings, these, these thongs, right? And I, I'm going to need you for this, since people can't see me. I'm going to need you to put your your finger to your, to your mouth. It's so, like every time I'm gassy, I'm wearing a thong. It's like my thong is like, shh. That, that's where you would put your finger up to your mouth. It's <laughs> like, it's like, shh. It's silent. Yeah. It. Yeah, I get it. I, here's... Thing. First of all, you could definitely shorten the intro. You could shorten the setup. Okay, yeah, yeah. Build up. You know, definitely okay. edit it down. Just cut to the cut to the chase. Exactly. You know, <laughs> it's like a roadblock. It's a gas. The G string's like a gas roadblock. It's a. Uh, you know, okay. it's like a yeah. sorting machine. You know, corn on this side, <laughs> and burrito on that <laughs> side. So that that that's just burrito my thoughts. My, okay, I'm gonna. Keep, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. I just, you know, just working stuff out, just trying it out. Somebody I can try it out with. Yeah. In fact, yeah, that's all I got though so far. Yeah, in fact, I'm a little worried because I'm, I signed up for one of those virtual open mics and it, it's today, so I'm, you know, do you mind if I try one of my? Well, feel free, feel free to just take that, you know. No, no, I got my own stuff. I, I could. You know, it's what else. It's still on the table, you know? No, it's yours. You can't take it back. No take-backs. No, no, I insist, though. No, it, Remember, it, I've given it, up on it. it. I've given it to you. Like, the virus is not spread. No, I, believe <laughs> went me. Went too far there. Went too far. No, <laughs> m mine is, like, uh, 
for this virtual open mic, I'll be like, wow, finally an excuse for me to put on a bra. You know. you know, when I put one on, I'm always like, I really mean this and this. That's how you know. Yeah. It's I'm strapped in. Exactly. I've, you know, I've never worn a bra regularly in my life, but, uh, you know, it's everybody's reassessing for this quarantine. <laughs> you know, doing priorities. And, uh, you know, just, uh, it's nothing, uh, it's nothing physic like mental or anything like that. I just, like having support. Exactly. Yeah, I get it. I mean, I understand it from a distance. As for me, I'm not wearing a bra this entire quarantine. Yeah. Like I'm adamant about it. Cause that shit sucks. <laughs> oh, definitely. I mean, you learn so many new hobbies in this quarantine. Like, uh, you know, for example, uh, I started drawing. You know, just cause I'm bored. So. So, I've been drawing, coming up Getting with my in own. Touch with your, yeah. It, coming up with. Getting in touch with the artistic side. Exactly, and um, also I've been try. I tried uh, fisting. Not a fan of that. <laughs> so. Oh, that was the, one of your hobbies. Oh, yeah. No, no. I guess if there's a good if time, Jenny, during this quarantine. Yeah, you know, it, you try things out in this, and um, I can understand how some people would enjoy it. It's just not for me. You know, it, mm. like drawing, it really taught me perspective. <laughs> so. Uh, okay, well, I hope you share some of this drawing, so, so that we can all judge it. It's judge not that good. It is, yeah. you know, it, it's like, it, it's, it's probably as good as my improv. I mean, I'm enthusiastic <laughs> about it, but in the end, there's so many better people. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's okay, it's fleeting, and hopefully your little open mic will be that as well, for everyone's sake. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So, uh, so rounding third and coming home, uh, you're in Dallas now, is that permanent or temporary? You know, I just say it's for now, because I'm a nomad man, can't time it down. Yeah. You... Um, it's going to be at least for a couple years, and then I'll see what I can afford. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> After that, we'll see where I want to be. Have you looked into any uh, improv theaters down there? Um, I have, but I've not visited any. And maybe that's the timing of everything. But I'm also personally looking to get into some scripted theater. Oh, of course. Some scripted work in general, because I really want to, you know, kind of amp up my, my craft in that regards. But um, improv has definitely helped me be like that foundation of that so moving forward though uh, i want to do some scripted stuff at least out here with the time that i have oh definitely maybe uh some shakespeare in the park and uh <laughs> yeah as long as we're six feet <laughs> apart <laughs> yeah i'm i remember this one time i was uh talking to you outside and i was like you know you should start doing auditions you know start going for acting roles and you're like how and i'm like i'm the last guy you know felker's in there he's the guy to talk to but, but yeah. Uh, maybe then I owe it to you, or maybe to Felker, or just myself, because I do. Um, so when yeah. I was out there, actually, was with um, an agency, Topo Soul, and they were amazing. Uh, I'm only not with them now because I'm not in the region. Yeah. But um, yeah, I did a little bit. I did a T Mobile commercial. Oh, nice. Which is really awesome. Uh, but it came out on April Fool's, which is. Full swing here. Yeah. <laughs> so when I posted it, like, nobody cared. Because nobody, nobody trusted anybody's post on April Fool's Day. Um, but yeah, it was pretty cool. That was, like, felt super legit. It was, like, my first legit, legit kick. Yeah. And, you know, with that... I hope to do that out here, you know, or wherever I go. Or end up. For sure. I always thought you could be one of those, uh... Not only just the star of a commercial, but if you just need some cash, you could be, you know, the background of, like, some hipster party. Be like, yeah, we should probably get some chicken wings. You know, nonchalant. <laughs> That'd be your character. Call girls. Yep. Yeah. I'm sure I'll find my place. Or we'll make it. 
Oh, I, I'm absolutely yeah. positive. You got you got the right a- attitude. You're so affable, and um, yeah, I like I said in the beginning, you got absolutely nothing but the sky holding you back. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Thank you. Yeah, you've always been incredibly encouraging and just grounding at the same time. So yeah, I love it. And mainly just because you and me, we would uh, you'd be part of the uh circle outside if you don't group yeah, yeah i'm not yeah. gonna I miss those. yeah I miss that those. all right so we're gonna wrap up the show tom d always great talking to you if you're ever bored or, you know hit me up anytime you're such a great person absolutely thank you so much for having me no problem take care